Hello, and welcome to your 71st, or is it 70th? I forget. Either way, we're getting up there. Tutorial, my name is Johnny DeLuca, and today I want to talk to you about replication. I want to show you how to configure replication, specifically how to configure the distributor, and then I'm going to talk to you uh, about the different types of replication and different types of replication uh, agents. But to start, first I'll show you the example, then I'll do the explaining. Okay, so let's go over Management Studio. I'm going to show you how to configure it. Okay, we're going right here to our replication folder. We're going to right click, and the first one we see is Configure Distribution. We're going to click that. Then we can go ahead and click Next. And then I'm admin L505. I can't tell you what your server is called, but it's most likely going to be the first one of these two radio buttons. So just click Next. Now, um, the first selection is yes, configure SQL Server Agent to start automatically. And we want that. However, a lot of times you'll get an error upon doing it this way. I don't uh, exactly know why, but I do know a workaround. It's just as easy. So I always elect to go no. I will start the SQL Server service manually. And then to show you how to do that, you would go to Configuration Manager right here. Okay. And then we'd be going over here to SQL Server Services. And then as you see right here, SQL Server Agent, I already have. I started it up before I started recording this tutorial, but you might see I also have SQL Server Express on here. SQL Server 2008, we're using 12, but it stopped. So if I wanted to start it, I would just right click and hit start. Okay, so now you know how to do that. Then we're just going to click next here. And then it's asking where we want to put the snapshot folder. And this is a good location for me, the default. So I'm going to click next. And then it's asking about the distribution database name. Uh, distribution works for me, and so do the defaults. So again, next, and again, next. And then here uh, we have the box we want checked for con configured distribution. I, uh, additionally, you can check the box that generates a script file with steps to configure distribution, but we don't need that. So next. Now we just have a little summary of all we did. You know, we configured distribution. I used admin L505 as distributor, uh, SQL Server agent service on, must be started manually, yada, 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 everything we just did. So, finish. That's going to go through the motions here. And normally, if we uh, click yes to have a SQL Server agent start up, there would be a third section there that would go through and that's where a lot of times a lot of users get a failure there upon starting it up that's why I just elect to do it manually it's just as easy and it saves a little bit of a hassle okay so we're good there now let's talk about this let's talk about replication let's get a little more edumacated alright so um well Let's see, replication is a group of SQL Server technologies that you can use to copy and move data and database objects from one database to another. Three primary types of replication are I'll be discussing over the next few tutorials. And the type that you choose will depend on several factors, which could include data size, frequency of movement, hardware, and the location of your computers. And these are not the only factors you're going to want to consider, but they're definitely among the more important ones okay and then we generally have three types of servers in a replication topology that I've outlined here we have a publisher which is a database server that contains the source data we have the subscriber the database server where the data and database objects are copied and we have the distributor which is the database server that stores changes and this information is stored in a database called the distribution database Consistency of the data is maintained by a replication synchronization process. Okay, so now what types of replication do we got? We've got five. Number one is snapshot. Number two, transactional. Three is merge. Four is Oracle Publisher. And last, we have peer-to-peer. -peer. Now, we're not going to really talk about Oracle Publisher or peer-to-peer -peer 
all that much because they're not really within the scope of these tutorials. Well, all five of these types move or replicate data, but the frequency that the data is delivered and the direction can vary among them all. Like I said, we're going to be focusing on snapshot transactional and merge and Oracle Publisher and peer-to-peer -peer are just more specialized. Oracle Publisher is usually used when you want to move data from one Oracle database to a SQL Server database. And peer-to-peer -peer replication is built on the foundation of transaction replication, but it's more of a scale-out and high availability deployment. So that would be for another discussion. Okay, let's talk about snapshot replication. Okay, so... Snapshot replication is exactly what the name implies. It's a snapshot of the data and database objects as they exist at any given point in time. When snapshot replication is configured, it is generally scheduled to occur at some specific interval. An entire copy or snapshot of the data is created and sent to the subscriber via the distributor. Since the entire data set is sent, tracking DML changes is not required. This has an added value because tracking changes adds overhead to the replication process. But on the other hand, if the snapshot is very large, distributing the data to the destination can be a lengthy process. You can schedule the generation and deployment of the snapshot to best meet your needs. Um, and it's typically used snapshot replication for the following scenarios. Uh, small amounts of data, high latency or intermittent network connection, data that changes infrequently, Copies of data that can be an hour, day, week, or month old. Okay, next on our list, let's talk about transactional. Okay, transactional replication, just like snapshot replication, begins with a snapshot. However, then the initial snapshot data and schema changes at the publisher are, in order, sent to the dist distribution database. Subscribers then receive the transactions, keeping them up to date with the publisher. Transaction replication is typically used in the following situations where we have the, the need for near real-time data on one or more subscribers, uh, data that has to be incrementally loaded, and data that is highly transactional or that changes frequently. Okay, now we're going to talk about merge replication, then we'll talk about replication agents. Uh, like the previous types, merge replication typically starts with a snapshot of the source database. Then the changes are tracked with triggers. This type of replication is common when users work in a disconnected manner and the data needs to be synchronized from a centralized repository to mobile devices and vice versa. When a user connects, the changes are synchronized between the two devices. Okay, now what about replication agents? All right. Well, moving data and database objects between servers can be a huge undertaking, and to accomplish this, SQL Server has four agents. We have Snapshot Agent, uh, Distribution Agent, Log Reader Agent, and Merge Agent. Okay, let's talk about the Snapshot Agent. Uh, all replication types leverage a snapshot to initially start the process, and as a result, they all use this agent. The snapshot agent generates the snapshot file which contains all the data needed to move the data and database objects that you will want to replicate. This agent writes all the information to the file system. It runs on the SQL Server instance that acts as the publisher. Okay, next on our list, the distribution agent. This agent is primarily used by snapshot and transactional replication. Snapshot replication uses the distribution agent to apply the generated snapshots to all subscribers. Transactional replication uses it to apply all subsequent changes to the subscriber since the initial snapshot. This agent runs on the SQL Server instance acting as a distributor for push subscriptions, and it runs on the subscriber for pull subscriptions. Okay, so now let's talk about log reader agents. This agent is used only by transactional replication. It moves transactions from the transaction log to the distribution database. If you have multiple databases configured to use transactional replication, you will have multiple log reader agents, one for each database. The log reader agent runs on the SQL Server instance acting as a distributor. And then last on our list, we have the merge agent. This agent is used only by merge replication 
The merge agent pushes the initial snapshot and successive incremental changes from the publishers to the subscribers. It detects changes on both the source, publisher, and destination, subscriber, databases since the last scheduled run of the merge agent. Merge replication includes a set of features that handle conflict, including conflict tables that store conflicting values. Okay, for example, assume you have a row on the subscriber that has a primary key of 555, and a row also exists on the publisher that has a primary key of 555. When the synchronization happens, a conflict will occur, and all the information will be logged to the conflict table. You can view this information using the Replication Conflict Viewer. Like the distribution agent, the merge agent runs on the SQL Server instance acting as the distributor for push subscriptions and on the SQL Server acting as the subscriber for pull subscriptions. Okay, well, that does it for this tutorial. Uh, you now know how to configure replication. You know how to, in primarily, I showed you how to configure the distributor and then I taught you about replication agent, snapshot agent, distribution agent, log reader agent, merge agent, and additionally we went over the different types of replication. Specifically we went over snapshot replication, transactional replication, and uh, merge replication. We didn't really cover Oracle Publisher or peer-to-peer -peer again. And uh, yeah, so thanks for checking out this tutorial. I'll see you in my next tutorial. Bye.